Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and today we are starting a brand new section. This is section 8 and because it's our first video or our first episode, it would be section 8 episode 1, uh, which is why it's labeled S8E1. So section 8, this is a brand new uh, chapter, if you will. My sections are kind of like chapters. So Let's just go ahead and get started at the top of page one of our notes. Section eight is called chemical bonding. Now, everything around us is comprised of a complex mixture of chemical compounds, all of which are bonded together with a variety of different atoms. So let's make sure we have that down in our notes. I'll say it again. Everything around us is comprised of a complex mixture of chemical compounds, all of which are bonded together with different kinds of atoms. Now, the manner in which atoms bind together is going to have a profound effect on that particular chemical compounds, chemical and physical properties. All right, moving on now, we have a little star here, and that little star is because I want to tell you that we, there are two types of chemical bonds. Now, we first were introduced to chemical bonds back in section two, uh, or chapter two, if you will. I call them sections. In section two, we learned how to do uh, naming ionic compounds and covalent compounds, and because we were naming an ionic compound versus naming a covalent compound, we had to know a little bit about ionic versus covalent. So we're going to elaborate much more on ionic bonding and covalent bonding in this section, of course. But today I just want to kind of touch base with you guys a little bit on ionic bonds. So there are two types of chemical bonds. Number one is ionic bonds. And then number two are covalent bonds. So let's take a closer look at number one, ionic bonds. It says down here in our notes, it says ionic bonds are stronger than covalent bonds and have a high bond energy. Well, the stronger the bond, the more energy that's required to break that bond. So that last piece should make sense. All right, so now we're on page two of our notes here, the top of page two of today's uh, notes on uh, section eight. It says, remember, ionic compounds are formed when an atom that loses electrons easily, and what atoms do we know that lose electrons easily? Generally the metals, right? The middle of the periodic table and off to the left. So the middle left of the periodic table, those are generally metals, and they like to form cations because they lose electrons easily. And they'll react with atoms that gain electrons easily. So there's an electron transfer there, right? It's a complete transfer of electrons. There's no tug of war like there is with covalent bonding. So let's just, let's, let's say that over again so we have it in our notes. Remember, ionic compounds are formed when an atom that loses electrons easily, for example, cations, usually a metal, reacts with an atom that gains electrons easily. And those are usually anions. Anions are, are usually non-metals. Uh, to the upper right of the, uh, metal, of the metalloid staircase, now, for simplicity, I'm ignoring polyatomic ions in that statement above, of course. So let's take a look at an example. This example wants us to find the energy of interaction, uh, which is more commonly referred to as the bond energy. But it says find the energy of interaction, or the bond energy, between a pair of Na plus and Cl minus ions, when the distance between them is 2.76 angstroms. In other words, and they've been nice enough here to tell us in nanometers that that's equal to 0.276 nanometers. Well, if you've ever had an introductory physics class, you've probably heard of Coulomb's law. Um, sometimes it's referred to as E equals KQQ over R. Well, this is the same Coulomb, same Coulomb's law, same equation. Um, I've inserted the constant here for you. So the energy is equal to 2.31 times 10 to the minus 19th joules nanometers times Q1, Q2 over R. Uh, let's define some variables here. Q1 is the charge on ion one. Q2 is the charge on ion two. 
And then R is just the distance between the two ion centers. All right. Uh, we, there is no, you can't really calculate the radius because of the whole undefined uh, outer limits of an ion or an atom, which we talked about in the last section, section 7. So the energy here is minus 8.37 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Now, the negative sign is, is what we were expecting because the negative sign in Coulomb's law means we have an attractive force, and we know that a plus and a minus are going to attract. Na plus is going to attract Cl minus to make sodium chloride, an ionic compound. And that energy there, negative 8.37 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, that's the bond energy for an ACL. All right, let's move to page three of today's notes. Now I've been talking about bond energy, haven't I? Well, the bond energy and the bond length, we can draw conclusions about them, which we will. So bond length, the definition, is the distance between two atoms or ions where the energy is minimal at a certain point. And we're going to show you this point in the plot below. So I'm going to end up drawing a big graph here at the bottom of this page of our notes. So please be patient with me as I sketch out the graph. So bond length is equal to the distance between two atoms or ions where the energy is minimal. So there's a certain point where the energy is minimal, and that's where the bond length is calculated. Not just anywhere you please, but where the energy is at the bottom of the trough, minimal. Now, the shorter the bond length, the stronger the bond, and therefore the harder it is to break the bond. So think of like a long string that's all wobbly and you're holding a string. Pretty easy to, to uh, kind of cleave that or cut that or break that in half, right? Whereas if I have a tighter string or even two or three strings, it's much harder for me to break through that. So the shorter the bond length, right, the stronger the bond, and therefore the harder it is to break the bond. Now, if you have a long, wobbly bond, it's much easier to break. So as an example and to show you bond length and bond energy and the relationship between the two, let's take a look at hydrogen's potential energy diagram. So this is the molecule hydrogen. This is H2. Now, H dash H, anytime you can draw a dash, that's a covalent bond. We'll get to that. But HH is a covalent bond, just so you know. And this is H2's potential energy diagram. You see the trough down there? The trough is actually lower than the value of zero. And then I'm drawing HH with all these little, it looks like it's got like sun rays. That just means it's really highly stressed. The H's on the upper, upper left of this are too close together. Okay, we don't want those two nuclei that close together because the nucleus is a plus and a plus. Down here at the bottom of the trough at negative 458 kilojoules per mole, we have optimal bond length. And that optimal bond length is 0 0.074 nanometers. Now off to the far right where the energy is zero, that's essentially, essentially kind of like two free hydrogen atoms. In other words, each hydrogen atom is they're far enough away they don't even recognize the other hydrogen atom is around. And I'm writing that down right now in our notes. It says two H's are so far apart that they can't even see each other. So there's no interaction. And that's what we give uh, to the value for zero kilojoules per mole. Now, on the far left, where the energy is higher than zero, you can see I've got those little sun rays, those little stresses. And then at the bottom of the trough, this is where energy is minimal. Mentions that at the top of this page of notes. That is the optimum distance to achieve the lower overall energy of a system. So there's a couple of things battling each other here. At this particular uh, bond length, 0 0.074 nanometers, um, we have the two uh, good interactions, the attractive interactions, the nucleus, which is a plus one, and the electron. Those are two attractive interactions, two attractive forces, and those guys are outweighing that plus one, plus one nucleus, nucleus repulsion when we're right here at this particular trough, which is at negative 458 kilojoules per mole. So the bond length is 0.074 nanometers, like I said, and the bond energy, just so we have it in our notes, is equal to minus 458 kilojoules per mole. Okay? All right. So that is the bottom of page three of our notes. Um, Let's move to the last page of today's notes. I believe this is page four, if I've been counting properly. All right, so we haven't really talked about 
anything about um, how to determine if a bond is ionic or covalent, we haven't even really gotten, we haven't even really approached that yet. I've just been giving you guys a little bit of background information on chemical bonding. So what determines whether a bond is ionic or covalent? Okay, and we're going to take care of that in the next video. So if you like the way I do these handwritten notes, um, you can see all of my general chemistry notes at chemistrynotes.com. And you can also see all of my organic chemistry lecture notes at chemistrynotes.com. So anyway, I will see you next time when we'll do the second video of Section 8, Chemical Bonding. All right, see you guys soon.